Right, good evening everyone and thank you very much for joining us here on what's been a lovely day down in this neck of the woods for the second in our series of FEIN Jobs webinars. This one's going to be on how to set up your LinkedIn profile for job search success. We're hosting this webinar in conjunction with Sam Waterfall, who you heard earlier. He's founder of Obvious Candidate and amongst other things, LinkedIn expert. Um, we're thrilled that so many of you are here to listen in and hopefully participate. Um, the webinar is scheduled to take no more than one hour and it has to take no more than one hour because if you haven't realized already, Sam's actually at the airport about to fly off to, I think, Indonesia or Singapore. So we'll try and wrap it up by nine o'clock and we hope you find it of value. Um, we'd really welcome any feedback you have when it's finished. And just before we kick off and to make sure that everything's working as it should, I'm going to ask a couple of questions so you can reply using the chat box on the right hand side of the screen. Um, and please do this throughout the webinar to ask any questions as we'd like it to be as interactive as possible. I'll be moderating throughout the event so I can pin questions to Sam as he goes through the main body of the presentation. So um, just to, I know some of you already said hello, but um, anybody else that hasn't done so far, oh, there's an echo on my line, okay? No, I'm not using a headset. Um, let's see if Sam can do anything about that. Thank you, Jeffrey. Can you just reply, um, if you haven't done already, with a hello or a um, hello, Jane, or yes, or anything else you fancy, just type it into the chat box so I know that you can all see it. And I know there's gonna be a little bit of a delay here. But I've got Hannah from Newcastle, excellent. Just wait a few seconds for any messages to come through. Oh, Sarah, we've got Sarah and Emily. Hello, ladies. And Hannah, hi. Good, okay, good. So we know everyone can hear me. And just finally, because we have people from actually the other side of the world signing into our last webinar which was very exciting could you just let us know roughly where in the world you're dialing in from oh we've got claire in leeds we've got london newcastle great i'm at, ter I'm at terminal three jane terminal three and i'm in buckinghamshire oh derbyshire i think we cover quite a few counties here Excellent, and Tariq from Newcastle, fantastic. I, uh, I put the word out to uh, some of my friends back at... Oh, uh, New Zealand, yay! Ah, oh, brilliant, yeah. very good. Go, very Emily. Good, thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Emily, that's great, good to see you. Great, and um, through the evening, we're going to be doing some polls um, that you can vote on throughout the webinar. So just to get you going, I've got a little practice one here, and also so I can understand um, what kind of job category you're currently working in so sam's just going to put a poll live now and then you can vote so Definitely. you should be able to see that now on the right hand side of your screen so we've got some category management strategy insight and innovation packaging people Process and technology. Wow. Oh, we've got grads. Excellent. We've got a really nice spread, some R and D. In fact, I think we've got nearly got a full house. We've only not got nutrition and regulatory and concept development. Excellent. Fantastic. Lovely. Thank you for doing that. So we're very well represented across the spectrum. Brilliant. Okay. So um, thank you for doing that, everybody. Um, so here's the agenda for tonight. You should be able to see that on your screen now. Um, we can do a quick welcome and some introductions. Then I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to explain a little bit about FDI and Jobs, who we are and what we do. And then Sam's going to take over um, for the full body of the presentation on how to set up your LinkedIn profile for job search success. He's going to take you through some key points, some practical demonstrations, and as you've seen already, some interactive polls. Um, he's then going to give a special offer for anybody who's joined us tonight, even if you're an FDI member or even if you're not, because it'd be great if you could join up and become one. And then finally, we'd love your input on helping us select the next webinar topic. So that's the agenda for the evening. We hope to have it wrapped up by nine o'clock. 
Great. So thank you, Sam. Um, so my name is Jane Payne. Um, yep, I had to get married to get that name. Um, I wasn't sure when he proposed, but it seems to be quite a catchy name. So that's great. Um, my background is primarily in branding and marketing. Um, I worked on everything from diamonds to pawnbroking and um, bread making flour to bras in my time. I've worked client side, agency side as a freelancer. So I've kind of seen all sides of the job seeking um, gamut in my career. I joined the FDIN back in December 2014 um, to help with the rebrand of the business and eventually the rollout of FDIN Jobs. Um, Sam, who joins me tonight, is founder of Obvious Candidate. Obvious Candidate is a specialist consultancy focused on positioning ambis ambitious job seekers for the right next job at the best possible salary. As well as doing all of this, Sam is a best-selling author of the Kindle book, The Seven Essential CV Upgrades, and he's board in 2003, so he is an expert and brilliantly placed to take you through tonight's information. So FD, the FDIN is part of the Food and Drink Innovation Network. Uh, we've been going around 12 years. We are completely independent. Um, and we're a professional association and we have in our ranks over 20,000 UK, primarily UK based, excluding Emily here, professional food and drink innovation members. We run events around nine or 10 times a year on a whole range of related topics and we publish breaking news stories on our site five times a day, every day. Um, so we estimate that we've probably broken 21,000 news stories since we've been going, which is quite impressive for a small organization like ourselves um, and you'll see back catalogs of all of that on our website so we decided last year that it would be great to connect all our members up through our new careers portal which is called FDI and jobs um, and on FDI and jobs we have unsurprisingly jobs uh, we have also a load of careers related content so there are interviews with people in the industry there's careers guidance, there's guidance for HR people. Um, so there's a real range of really exciting content for you to find. So please go ahead and take a look at that when you have a minute. Um, in the short period of time we've been live, we've become uh, number one in natural search for food and drink innovation jobs, which we're very excited about. We've managed to divide every job on the site into one of nine key categories so that's really to help you find the job that you want potentially very quickly so we've got nine categories and i won't read them all out but we did quite a bit of research before we went live with this new site to kind of make sure that everybody was represented or every kind of job category was represented but in a way that makes it really easy for you to find and we carry roles at all levels of the spectrum, from graduate and apprentice, and I know we've got some of you here, right up to director level um, and everything in between. <clears throat> um, and as you'll see, just from some of these logos we've put up on the, this chart, we really work very hard to work primarily and almost exclusively with client companies rather than recruitment advertising, recruitment agencies. And this is really to help you as candidates because we feel it's only fair that when you're applying for a job, you know who you're applying for a job with. So you'll see that probably 95% of the jobs on our site are directly from a whole range of client companies, from very small ones up to some of the biggest ones that you'll see here. And finally, before I hand over to Sam, um, I just want to alert you to a couple of things on the site that may help you if you are currently seeking a new job. You can go onto the site and um, register for free job alerts. It takes a couple of minutes to fill in. Um, and what it'll do, basically, you can put in the kind of categories of jobs that you're interested in, the job level, the job type, um, and any other keywords you want and any relevant locations. And basically, it will e we will then email you as soon as a new job comes onto the site. So you don't always have to be coming back and checking. Um, and the second thing, is that there's a fantastic free guide. I say it's fantastic because Sam wrote it, and it is very fantastic. Um, 
And what it will allow you to do is as soon as you register for job alerts with us, you'll be able to download this free guide. And it's a, a guide to accelerating your job search within the food and drink industry. It's packed full of really great tips and information. So it's, um, and it's very concisely written. So it's well worth having a look at. So I'm going to hand over to Sam now, who's going to take you through how to set up LinkedIn for your job search success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jane. So good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening from Terminal 3. Uh, I'm joining you, would you believe, from the Emirates Lounge, uh, which is at the moment blissfully quiet. But as you may well know, these lounges can get very busy. So I'm just going to keep fingers crossed. Uh, I'm actually going not to Singapore or Indonesia, Jane, this evening. It's um, Beijing via, via uh, Dubai. So... Um, <laughs> that's right. I just want to check everyone can hear me, um, which is really important as well. So hopefully you can hear me and there's not too much background noise. I will do my best uh, to uh, muffle the uh, the other noises from around me, uh, although you may get invited to board at any time. So that's just a, a hazard within this webinar. Uh, if you can hear me in New Zealand, uh, can you give me a big Kiora in the uh, chat box? Uh, and if you can hear me in Newcastle, perhaps a, a YI man, uh, I know I've got a few uh, friends from Newcastle University. I was with you the last couple of weeks, uh, once from Singapore. Uh, thank you very much from Newcastle. Uh, and uh, also we did, a, we did a LinkedIn session up there as well. So this material has been tried and tested. Brilliant. Thanks, Jeffrey. Kiora, thank you very much, Emily. Appreciate that. Very good. So. What I would like to do then is just sort of kick off for this. Now, um, Jane, you've heard me uh, sort of say this exactly before, but when I talk to an audience, what's really uh, important to me, I mean, I'm sure you've been to many seminars and courses, things can be either very interesting or they can be very useful. And uh, I'm intent on making this as useful as possible for you. So by all means, do take notes. If you want to um, do screen grabs on the slides, please do that as well. That's fine. Uh, I will be able to make the slides available to you afterwards if that's helpful. Uh, I really want to make sure that this works for you. That's what it's all about. So if something doesn't make sense to you, please just pop the question in. Jane's there very helpfully to, to moderate those, and she'll pass those through to me uh, as I'm going through. What it would be really helpful for me to do, though, just so I can really make sure this is as effective as possible, I'm interested where you are at the moment with your job search. So I'm just going to load that uh, poll up at the moment. So if you, you see that arriving now on the right-hand side of your screen, let me know where you are at the moment. Are you thinking about starting? Are you starting now? Are you in the first three months? Uh, has it been going for four to six months? Have you been searching for longer than six months? Or maybe you're not searching at all. You just think this might be more fun than, uh, than TV this evening. Let me know where you're up to. Getting most people voting now. That's great. Thank you. Just uh, all you need to do is click on it over there on the right hand side. So it looks like most of you, I'm just going to, I'm going to end that poll. You'll see the result. So are you either thinking about starting or you're starting now? Do you know what? I love it when people uh, work with me and they're thinking about starting or they're starting now rather than coming to me after you've been looking for six months and it's not been working. So that's fantastic. So I hope you'll be able to put these uh, exactly to use. So one more uh, question. I'm going to just try and find out now from you. Where are you with your LinkedIn profile? So tell me that. Is it that your profile is already getting you job opportunities? Are people connecting with you and saying they want you to work for them? Uh, is your profile perfect? Uh, could your profile be improved? Would you say that your profile needs some serious help? Uh, or are you at the stage of saying, you know, Sam, what's LinkedIn? Getting the votes in now. Most of you are telling me that either the, uh, the profile could be improved or a few of you very honestly saying that you need some serious help. Uh, we love a bit of honesty. That's great. So, uh, okay, you should put, should be able to see those. So most people say it could be improved. And uh, to be honest, that's, that's every profile, mine as well. Um, it's an ongoing thing trying to uh, keep your LinkedIn as perfect as we can. Uh, so this is all about making that work. So let's jump straight in. Uh, what I'm going to do now uh, is just in the next 45 minutes, we're going to cover really the most important rule of networking. We're going to look at why LinkedIn is so important. I've got a bit of sociology theory for you, which I think is very important. Uh, I'm going to then give you the surprise news about the target that you should be writing your profile for. I'm going to tell you about the golden trio. That's the three critical elements of your LinkedIn presence that you really must get right and how to do that, of course. I'm going to show you how to write your summary to make a really effective summary that uh, gets connections for you. 
I'm going to talk to you about how to get your interests right, all about endorsements and recommendations, the difference between those two very important uh, interactions with third parties on your profile, talk to you about the statistics uh, on LinkedIn, and also how to set it up and give you a checklist for what you need to be doing uh, to get it set up and, and ongoing. And then for anyone who wants some more help, I have got a special offer for you at the end of this. So uh, nothing compulsory there, but if you'd like to get more help, showing you exactly how you can do that. And we will, of course, do a QA. and a And Jane will uh, hopefully interrupt me at uh, a few points and just uh, let me know about any questions that are coming in. I so will. thank you very much. Hope, hope you're all feeling like you're now in the right uh, webinar. So this most important rule of networking, let me tell you about that. The most important uh, rule is that connections, as LinkedIn calls them, are people. We're all people, we're all individuals, we've got hopes, fears, ambitions, things that we're good at, things that we're bad at. And you know, we really need to be helped. You know, we need to help each other. So if you can have the attitude of serving your network, there's a, a networking group that I've been a part of um, in the past called uh, BNI or Business Networking International, and their motto is give us gain. And the whole idea, and I love this, if you can help enough other people, this is something that a guy called Zig Ziglar said. Zig said that if you help enough other people get what they want, you can have anything you want in life. So go out there and don't ask your network to just help you. Go out there and help them. And I think uh, that the Hard Rock Cafe had it right with their love all, serve all. So that's a, a very important way to sort of view networking in general. So why is LinkedIn so important? Well, LinkedIn is really important because this is the world we used to live in. I don't know if you've been to a, a big conference, maybe you've been to one of the FDIN events. Uh, you know, they're fabulous seminars. You can meet lots of people. And when you sit down at those events, you, you end up with a lot of business cards, hopefully. But what do you do with them? And you know, this is, a, if you've seen perhaps your parents' address book uh, from the past, that's what these used to look like. And if someone moved house or changed their number, Gosh, you had to, you know, scribble it all out, and, and luckily we're not in that place anymore. So luckily we've gone from that scenario now to where things tend to be fairly electronic. Uh, we've got uh, electronic address books, and we're all pretty connected around the world. And LinkedIn is really important because it's now got so many of us on board. It really is the world's number one uh, social networking site for business. And you see here from the, the graphic on the right uh, that this is LinkedIn announcing just in the last month now you can meet our 20 million UK members. So uh, if you're outside the UK, there's even more. I believe there's about 400 million in total around the world. But uh, we've got 20 million in the UK. Now think about that. If we've got about 75 million of us in the country, there's a lot of people who are retired. There's tons of kids in school. If you think about the working population, most of us are on LinkedIn. So if you're not on LinkedIn, you're left out. And that's why it's so important. Is so. Limit, Sam, uh, that you, you know you have to be a certain age to be on LinkedIn. Absolutely not. We we love octogenarians and uh, people celebrating the hundredth birthday. Everyone's welcome. I'm but, at the other end of the spectrum. Oh, I, I thought you might have done. Um, I you know what? I'm not absolutely sure, but it's um, I, it's probably sixteen. I would imagine. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe eighteen, but uh, certainly. I, I work with a lot of students, a lot of undergrads, and certainly people who are about 18 years old, they're getting involved. Uh, and by all means, you should be connecting with the 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds, because guess what? In five years' time, six years' time, some of them two years' time, they're going to be doing something awesome, uh, and you're going to wish you'd connected back when you, when you should have done. So you know, it, it's really there for all of us, and it is the world's number one search engine for talent. So make sure you're on it, and make sure you're well represented. Now, I did a, a Google search on me. Okay, I recommend you do this. Find out what happens if you type in your name. Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, is it ugly? Uh, I luckily came out on top, but the important thing for this webinar is that my LinkedIn profile came out as the number one search out of nearly one and a half million searches uh, or, or findings and, and results for that search. Now, that means that if you control your LinkedIn profile, which you do, that's your very best chance of controlling what the internet says about you. Now, just think about that for a moment. That's incredibly important, really, really important, because when a, a recruiter gets your CV, they will Google you. See, as you can see here, Google absolutely loves LinkedIn. It's the profile that is likely to be the very first result. Uh, now, you may be sharing your name with uh, other uh, people with, you know, if you're a John Smith uh, or something similar, maybe there's plenty of other people who share that name. There are ways of making sure you're the first John Smith, and that's one of the things that we'll be looking at uh, on this webinar. 
So this sociological theory that I promise you, I promise you this isn't boring theory. This is really, really important. It, this is called the strength of weak ties. And uh, there's a guy called uh, Mark Granovetter. I say a guy. This is Professor Mark Granovetter from Stanford University uh, over on the West Coast uh, in the United States. Back in 83, he was doing some work and he came up with this theory called the strength of weak ties. Now, if you imagine your personal network with you at, right at the center of it and around you, you've got people who you're closest to. And you can imagine concentric circles coming out from around you. The people who are closest to you, they're what Granovetta refers to as strong ties. So this would be people like your best friends, your partner, your close family, uh, your closest colleagues. And what happens, of course, is that those people who you're close to all the time, they see the world pretty much as you do. And they're your strong ties. But a little bit further out in your network, you've got weak ties. And these are people who you don't see all the time. So they're people who you may remember from school, maybe from university, uh, maybe from a conference you went to, but people who are just further flung out in your network. They're your weak ties. These are the kind of people actually who you don't need to keep in touch with. Your strong ties, you need to speak to them pretty much every day. Try not talking to your partner for a day or half a day. Uh, you'll know there's a problem. So the point here is with weak ties, these people, you don't speak to them all the time. So guess what? What's a great thing, according to Granovetta, is to increase your number of acquaintances because your weak ties are your best source of new opportunities, new jobs, new leads, and new ideas. You know this because if you go to a seminar like one of the FDIN uh, events where you're learning about maybe innovation or uh, branding within the food business, when you go there, you meet people or you hear the speakers and they teach you about things that you just didn't know about. And by connecting with them, you discover new things. And of course, maybe one of them puts you into with someone who wants you to work for them, the job idea as well. So LinkedIn is really the perfect way to meet new weak ties, to connect with weak ties, and to keep in the mind of your weak ties and to be serving your weak ties. Because imagine when it was back to that old paper address book, it was very difficult to keep in touch with people. It was a big effort. These days with LinkedIn, you can just announce and all of your network knows that you've posted. So it's a fabulous way of keeping in touch. So that's why this is so important. And uh, this worked for me, okay? So my story was that when I decided I wanted to transition jobs, I wanted to come out of uh, corporate life and go into the agency side. And I went on a course, I met someone on a course who said, oh, where were you at school? Uh, and I said, oh, I was at Loughborough. And he said, oh, where were you, where did you start work? And I said, I was uh, at P&G. And he said, you know what, I was at Loughborough and I was at PNG. And you know when that happens, you've got that amazing rapport straight away. So we went for lunch together on the course. He said, you've got to come and meet with me. Uh, I think there's a job for you with me. After 10 minutes into my interview the next week, he said, I've got to phone someone about you. And I got on uh, the next day, they, I was meeting the next guy from an agency where I ended up working. But they said, Do you know what, we haven't got anything for you at the moment, but you should go and interview in our Amsterdam office. So the next day I was on a flight to Amsterdam. And then they said, well, we're starting up something new because we haven't got anything right for you, but you should speak to this guy in Sweden. And so my connections went crazy at this point. I'd never done anything like this, but it was all from my network. So that set me up for huge progress in my career. So I was able to do much more of what I wanted. So your weak ties are really, really important. So on to now, who is your profile for? And the important thing here is it may be a surprise. You should write your profile with two things in mind, not two people, two things. The first one is the LinkedIn algorithm. By that, I mean the clever computer system behind LinkedIn, which actually serves the results. When someone searches maybe for product development expert or nutritionist, dietitian, food strategist, any of these things, when someone searches for that on LinkedIn, it's the computer that sorts out the results. And guess what? All it has to go on is what you put into your profile. So the way you write first, you write first for the algorithm and secondly for your human reader. And for most people, that's a bit of a shock because it's a bit of a different way of thinking about things. But the truth is, if you don't impress the algorithm and the computer first, it's like showing up on that first page of Google, you're going to come so far down the listings of all the other food project managers or food nutritionists that you're not even going to get found. So you have to impress the algorithm first before you impress your human reader. So I hope that's a useful wake-up call. Now, 
your golden trio. But before we go into the golden trio, Jane, have we got any questions coming in? Is, is uh, everything okay? Because I can't see that chat everything at the moment. It's okay. We don't have any questions at the moment, but if you do put them into the chat box, I'll make sure that we get to read them out, please. Great. And uh, let us know if you can still hear everything. If the slides are moving, if it's all making sense. Uh, otherwise, well, otherwise, I'm going blind because I can just see my slides at the moment. So, no, you're doing a great job, Simon. Everybody is still here that started with us, so you're doing a great job. Carry on. <laughs> well, whoop to that. That's really good news. <laughs> so uh, anyway, the golden trio. So these are the three most important parts of your presence on LinkedIn. You'll find that these follow you everywhere you go. You'll have noticed this already if you've set up your profile. So the first thing is your profile photograph. The second thing is your name. And the third thing is your professional headline. So basically wherever you look on LinkedIn wherever you show up that's what people find about you whether it's in a search results that who's uh, viewed your profile section the LinkedIn uh, homepage all of these different places whether you're in a group that's what people see and it looks a bit like this so I've just pulled mine out so that you can see it uh, and I've set mine up hopefully to be of interest to people who might want to work with me. Now, I work in branding with businesses, and I work in, in, of course, job search with job seekers. So I want to be able to help you either work on your business brand or on your personal brand. And of course, my credibility factors as a speaker, as an author, and as a consultant. So that's what I'm trying to do there. And in my picture as well, I've uh, picked uh, something there, and I'll show you exactly how I selected which picture to use. Sam, those so, tips that you've got, are they yes. actual ticks that appear on your within your profile? They are exactly, uh, okay. and all I did was I just grabbed them from uh, the symbols in Word. Uh, okay. So you just go through it or grab them from anywhere else, and you can just copy paste them into that section of your profile. So it, it makes mine stand out. When you're in a list of people with uh, good connections, all I'm trying to do there is disrupt people and make them see me. And that's exactly the reason why it's a bit small on this picture, but it's why I've got all those brand logos around my picture as well, because people think, ah, well, if he does that, if he's on Amazon, if he's written for the Chartered Institute of Marketing, it just adds to my credibility. Okay, so, so it's, it's added to your picture right. as well as to the words. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, so lots of little tricks and tips there. Another person uh, would be Stuart. Uh, Stuart just says he's living on a mountain. Now, I don't know Stuart really, um, but if you want to live on a mountain or if you're interested in meeting him, that's great because that's going to really stand out. But it's not the way I wanted to present myself because I figured less people would probably get in touch. So uh, entirely up to you, but you can see the difference. Now, the photo. So how do you get this right? I promise you, with my clients, I work with a lot of clients uh, to improve their job search. We've literally added, and sometimes in many, in some cases, much more than £10,000 to salaries, literally by standing out and looking the part. So just to give you one for instance on this, one of my clients had been working uh, with a, a sort of consortium that was working with the government. He'd been privileged enough to go to 10 Downing Street to go and advise the government uh, on behalf of his sector. And he's got one of those lovely photos, not a selfie, but a nice photograph from outside 10 Downing Street. And my goodness me, when you're in a suit outside 10 Downing Street, it looks official. So that image really built his credibility. And he's just landed a top job. He's a COO with a, a top company within his sector. It added a lot more than 10,000 to his salary. Of course, it wasn't just the photograph, but the photo is the first thing people see. So please, please, please don't underestimate this. If it isn't 10,000 for you, it can be at least thousands. So please take it very seriously. How do you do this? Photofeeler.com. It's a funny sounding website. Uh, I'll give you that one. Uh, but what they do, Photofeeler, is they let you um, have other people vote on your photograph. So here's two of mine. I'm going to just bear my soul to you. Um, some of them were better, some of them were worse. So the photo that I'm using is the one on the right hand side. Are you the same age in both of these, Sam? Huh? No. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jane. No, good question. No, the one on the left, I was considerably younger. In fact, that's a picture of me when I was a boy. Um, so, uh, but on the right hand side, uh, you can see I'm voted in the top percentile there for competence and very high for influence. And my likability is down through the floor. So I have to just, you know, frankly, suck that up and just go, do you know what? I'm not on LinkedIn to make lots of friends. I'm there for business. So I need to be likable. You can see how it works. The likable, if you want more likability, uh, eye contact and a smile works wonders. 
Uh, the other one, I think I'm clearly looking a bit miserable, uh, but it works for, for my business. So that's why I'm there. So I show you those so you can score this. But at least when you've got two or three photographs, rather than just saying, well, I like this one, then you can actually get some data behind the decision to know what you're doing. And trust me, this is really worth doing. Here's what not to do with your photo. This is not Facebook, okay? So the me age two photo, avoid that one. The me doing sport, hanging off a climbing wall, uh, avoid that one. The me, oh, I love a drink photo, definitely to be avoided. Uh, we, we can enjoy a drink, but we don't need to sort of promote it as our uh, first impression. And of course, this one, I don't know if you've ever done any online dating, but the anonymous me picture is the one that gets zero dates. Uh, so this is the one that's the same for jobs. Uh, if you're not putting your picture on LinkedIn these days, people think you're hiding something. So really important to be out there and to be true to yourself. So here's a very important SEO tip. Remember, we're trying to impress the algorithm. That computer's really clever, but it can't look at a photograph. It can't appreciate a photograph like you and I can. So don't save it like most people do. They think, oh, it's for LinkedIn. I'll just save it as LinkedIn.jpg, like everyone else does. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this sorry. Here comes Google the announcements from uh, Emirates. Uh, apologies. In association with Qantas. Please be advised your aircraft has coming to London Heathrow once it's been cleaned, catered, and refilled. And so my good news is my plane's arrived. <laughs> So Excellent. The, the even it's better news is it hasn't left. We're okay. Even better news is that they still got to clean it, so I'm not going anywhere. So that's good. So uh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going for you. So the tip here is don't just save it as LinkedIn.jpg, but actually put your name into this because that's the bit the computer can read. Now you want to show up as the first person with your name. So if it's Jane, put Jane Payne. Put FDIN jobs and put director because they're important keywords for the computer to see. I say see in inverted commas. For me, it was about, for example, being a CV writer. So my name plus that. So save every picture that you upload with keywords in there. If you know a bit more about this, you can even get special software and you can save the alt tags, the ALT tags in the photograph. That's another thing that the computer can read that the human can't. But don't leave it up to that uh, search engine to spot your photo. This is a great way of getting ahead. Uh, in those search results. The next bit here, your name. LinkedIn terms and conditions specify it should be just your name. So not your letters of qualification or your memberships. So just uh, no marketing message or anything. So not John Smith, MBA, MCIPD, you know, HR guru, no messages like that. Just John Smith is the name, that's what's required. And your professional headline, this is your huge opportunity. So when you get to add this to your profile, you've actually got 120 characters. Use them all, okay? They're there for you to use. So our top uh, girl in this image, she's not used many of them. She's just said that she's the assistant marketing manager uh, for the Southeast Asia region. And I picked that because she's saying SEA. Not everyone around the world knows that SEA means Southeast Asia. So she might be losing people or getting um, sort of invitations from the wrong part of the world just because she's not, not being clear with that. By contrast, look at the next one, Teresa. She's the VP of brand marketing. She's a speaker and winner of the most influential chief marketing officer award. If you've done something, tell people about it, okay? Because this is what people see about you. This is what's gonna get people to visit your profile. If you're in a job search, you want people to click and see your profile. And if it's a, remember how important a first impression is as an interview or when you meet somebody face to face, this is your first impression online. And as we've said, if someone Googles you, they're gonna find LinkedIn first. So this is your hook, grab attention, explain what you do, and how you can help your target employer or help your client build your credibility, and be careful with jargon or acronyms, okay? So that's the top tips for making sure that your golden trio really works. And should you put your company name in, if you're working somewhere currently, should you put your company name in that uh, yeah. in the two lines? Yeah, great question, Jane. Um, so actually LinkedIn automatically defaults your most recent uh, job uh, title and also the company as your uh, default title. Now you can leave that, that's fine. And it's really useful, of course, if you're working for a major player within the industry. That's something that people recognize. Uh, if it's somewhere especially 
uh, that people want to be working that obviously holds lots of water and it's obviously why you were trying to get there in the first place no doubt because you're working for a great company so that can be great if you're working for a smaller company rather than saying i work for no one knows uh, me plc uh, you know or dot com avoid that completely and just say what you do and what you bring because there's no rules here your job is to make sure you're noticed for your skills and your transferable skills next up your summary so this is ne the next section down after the main box on linkedin and it's the bit which can be a little bit concerning you've got two thousand characters of free form text so you can really say whatever you want to say to introduce yourself the question is sometimes where do you start is that blank page moment where you look at that is a bit like one of those uh, do you remember those ucas forms at university where you have to to fill those in and talk about yourself that's the same on linkedin so here's a formula for you that really works. What, if, what you can do is you can explain in the first paragraph and keep it very short, just to say what is the challenge of what you do. So if I'm helping someone with CVs, for example, I can say, do you know what? Getting your CV right is so difficult. It's difficult to sell yourself. It's difficult to talk about all the things you've done. And sometimes it just feels like you're bragging. Next paragraph, I solved that. Okay, so you're very confidently coming in here with a three word paragraph that just says, I solve that. I take care of that problem that I know you're facing. So when your target uh, reader comes to your profile, you hit them in the challenge of what's the biggest problem they're facing. And you say, I solve that. Now, you don't need to be the only one that solves it. You just need to have a good idea about how to go about making their world better. And the next paragraph is to outline the benefits that you bring. I do this for you, I do this for you, I do that for you. And the next bit is to explain the evidence as to why that should be believed, why that's true. So maybe you've been writing CVs for a thousand people, or maybe some of the people you've written CVs for have landed jobs at the world's most wanted and sought after employers. So that's the evidence that what you're doing really works. Then you can put some bullet points in of your top areas of expertise. And guess what? This is about getting the keywords into your summary because different parts of the profile are regarded more important by the algorithm behind the scenes. And that headline, by the way, is incredibly important. So make sure you put your keywords into the headline and make sure you put your keywords into the summary. But also later on, we're going to come on to your areas of interest, which is another great place for putting it. And you'll also find that the job titles for each individual job. So if you are a project manager, or if you're a nutritionist, LinkedIn's going to pay very careful attention to those job titles as well. So that's a, another tip for you there. And the final one, a call to action. Tell people how to contact you. Invite them to connect with you. If someone's come to your profile, you want to get involved with them. That's important. It's an opportunity to take that uh, digital relationship further. So I call it a digital dance. If someone comes to your profile, they look at your profile, you, you can see that in your statistics. You can see that. You can then look at their profile. If you're interested, then that's a kind of invitation for one of you to approach the other and say, hi, saw your profile, saw you looked at my profile, shall we connect? And then, of course, you can move on from that point point uh, to either talk about your uh, probably not straight into do you have a job for me because this is networking remember it's people you need to build some rapport first ask about them and get the conversation going but it's a great way to actually meet people and do you recommend that um, people try to use up all of those 2,000 characters Sam yeah I absolutely do because the the important thing here is the algorithm is looking at that space to uh, know you as well as possible. If you think, oh gosh, well, I don't know anything about myself, I'm only going to write a hundred words and I'll just write it briefly and then move on. Well, you know, well done because you saved yourself some of your evening, but don't expect to get lots of great results from LinkedIn because LinkedIn is looking for words and don't be shy about repeating because you don't know whether someone, if you're a project manager, you don't know if they're going to type in project manager, project management, project leader team leader you know people could type in lots of different things or operations manager we know they're all slightly different but who knows who's going to type in what so having different combinations of words and different ways of explaining what you do is a very valuable way of making sure you show up and that's a great way here on your interests so here's another way of doing this. this is another thing that the algorithm looks very hard at forget modern cinema socializing uh, reading uh, and maybe if you're a collector of Persian pottery this is not the space for that uh, unless that's your job so instead remove all those things and use all of your keywords that you can 
and put them in like this. So if you're involved in NPD management, for example, write NPD, which is the famous in the industry expression for new product development. But you'll see the next thing I've done is I've written new product development in full. And then I've called it innovation management, which is another way someone might describe it. Maybe you're a food and beverage expert, a team leader, a team, team leadership and team leader, you see, it seems similar, but different people will type in different things. Team management, innovation, sales, new business. The computer's gonna count up how many times it sees relevant words, and it's going to reward you by serving you higher up the search results. So a very important way there to use your interests. Now, on to endorsements and recommendations, okay? So these are super important, but they're quite different. And endorsements on your profile, these are the ones that look like this. I've just grabbed mine as another uh, for instance. Now, you might have seen your contacts. The contacts count up to 500, and then it just says 500 plus. When it comes to endorsements, you can only show up to 99, and then it just says 99 plus. Now, these are fairly important. The reason I say that is because there's a number of ways of using them. You might have said to yourself, well, I wonder how useful these are or how valid they are because sometimes people just seem to endorse me for something and they don't really even know me or I've never really worked with them. So what I would say is, yep, that's true. So there's a, there's a credibility issue with these for sure. But imagine you're hiring somebody and you've got two candidates and one of them, so we'll take marketing strategy at the top of this list. If you want someone who knows marketing strategy, if someone's got 99 plus endorsements for marketing strategy and the other person's got four, it gives you an indication about who's doing better at marketing strategy. Now, you're not gonna get the job because you've got 99 plus, but it just suggests if you've got a, a good smattering of the right skills here, all well endorsed by the industry, it suggests that really you're pretty good and you can do this. So for me, the industry is saying I can do marketing strategy, strategy, entrepreneurship, brand management. These are the things that I've tried to optimize my profile for. And no. can you create, sorry, Tom, can you create your own things you want to be endorsed for? Absolutely, absolutely. So go down your list of keywords. Basically, when I say keywords, the way to think about that is what might someone type in if they were trying to find someone who has your skills? If you're a nutritionist, you know, they're going to type in nutritionist or maybe specialist nutritionist. Maybe there's a difference. Maybe there's like halal nutritionist. Maybe if you're in a niche of nutrition, maybe it's sports nutrition. So whatever it is that people ought to type in to find you, you want to be optimized on those words. And what you should do then is having added those, and you can add that into your profile when you're editing your profile, you can then aim for at least 50 uh, on each one. So, And the way to get this, do you remember at the very beginning we said give us gain? Go to other people's profiles in your network and endorse them. If you endorse 10 people, I guarantee that about at least two or three, maybe four of them will come back and start endorsing you and clicking on yours as well. And you can actually, in the edit function, if you find that you've got one which is too low, uh, you can actually edit, drag and drop the order of these so you can change it. And what happens is LinkedIn even serves the top ones to more people. So more people will get the chance to endorse you for the ones that you think are most important. Uh, I was uh, with a group the other day and I saw someone who'd got Microsoft Office as their top skill. Now. <laughs> Now, really, you know, if you're in the food industry, you don't, you know, my niece who's four can use Word these days. So, you know, Office, great, absolutely, you need to be able to use that stuff, but don't show off about Microsoft Office, okay? We need your, your credentials within your sector, okay? So this is not gonna get you the job, but it's gonna make you look more credible, okay? The other thing is, as well, this is a perfect way of reconnecting. It's a perfect way of giving to your network. If you get a chance, if you've got a quiet moment, go through your connections and endorse people because they will love you for it. Just like you like the email that comes from LinkedIn and says you've been endorsed by your connections. That feels good. Give other people the feel good and you will get rewarded for that within your networking. Also, we're gonna move now on to recommendations, but this is a little bit like that. Um, you know you don't just meet someone and propose marriage because that really doesn't go well. Uh, you need to sort of you know warm up the situation perhaps uh, for a little bit. Well, it's just the same when you're trying to get recommendations. So for a LinkedIn recommendation, these are really important because the algorithm loves recommendations. If your profile is word for word the same as somebody else's, down to your name, if you have a recommendation and your uh, namesake and same uh, skills person has no recommendations, LinkedIn will serve you ahead of them in the search results. Now, 
I'm telling you aim for 20 plus recommendations. That might seem like a lot, I promise you it isn't. Make sure you've got at least 20 recommendations from different people, from different levels of seniority, ideally from people of influence, your chief exec, your company owner, but also from your uh, new start assistant, your intern, because people want to see if they're gonna hire you that you can relate to everybody. But make sure you've got these recommendations. Now, just like that instant proposal, not a good idea. If you haven't spoken to someone, one of your weak ties for, let's say, three years, don't go to them and just say, oh, hi, Jane, not spoken to you for three years. Could you recommend me? Because Jane's going to say, uh, Sam, what is this? And I'm busy. So far better to actually contact Jane. And a great way to get that started might be to visit her profile, take an interest in what she's doing, maybe give her some endorsements, connect with a message, and get talking. You'll have a fabulous conversation just by reconnecting with Jane after all those years, whether she's a, a colleague or someone you met at a conference. And after you've reconnected and you've actually got something and you've given something, next thing say, do you know what? Now I'm looking to get some recommendations. I wonder if you could help me. And you'll find you get so much of a better response. But when it comes to your job search, you've just activated a weak tie, someone who now is interested in what you're doing again, who you can ask uh, if she knows any jobs in her network. So that's exactly the way to go about doing this. How do you do it? How do you get um, a recommendation? On your edit page, this is my edit page, you go to that button that says view profile as, and if you click on the drop down next to it, the second one, asks you to be, if you want to be recommended, to so ask to be recommended. And the next thing that you do is you choose which position you want to be recommended for. So you click on that drop down. This is all my jobs in the past. Uh, all my, uh, yeah, I just can't keep a job down, Jane. So I just keep <laughs> moving on. See how old I am now. So uh, you select the one you want to get recommended for. Uh, and then what you do, it, it says, who do you want to ask? and you can now select from all of your connections, all of the people that you want to speak with. Now, it says you can add three people and get three in one. Don't do that. Treat these people as individuals. Go to them individually, warm people up first, warm up the relationship, and then you'll get a wonderful recommendation. It's exactly the best way to do it. Very quickly, we're running towards the end of the hour, your LinkedIn stats. Uh, this is just so you can keep an eye on what is happening. If you're searching for jobs, you want to check on these. So you see next to my name here, this is on my home page. So if you click on home, it tells me that 30 people had viewed my profile in the past three days from, from when I took this screen grab. Uh, and 15 people had viewed one of my posts. Okay, this was about launching MBD. So I can look at those stats. And also what I recommend is I recommend you invest. It's only about 15 or 20 pounds a month to upgrade to get a job seeker version, a premium edition of your profile. You see it says premium next to the top of mine at the top there. Because it means you can see all the people, not just the most recent five who viewed. And that can be very, very helpful for knowing exactly who's looking at your profile. This is a bit deeper inside. So, you know, 251 views. In the, in the last 90 days and you can go in deeper and find out who are these people who have been looking at the profile and that can be a great way if you're a consultant to find new business uh, or if you're a job seeker to connect with people in the company you want to work with. Sam, um, I'm just going to interrupt a moment. If you have any questions for us and given they take a little bit of time to arrive in the inbox, please pop them in the inbox, in, in the chat box now and then I can post them to uh, feed them to Sam in a few moments. If you have any questions, just Pop them in the chat box now. Sorry, Sam. No, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, please, any questions, please ask away. Uh, as I said, really want this to be uh, not just interesting, but useful for you. So hopefully you've got a few tricks and tips in here as well. This is your checklist, okay? This is how to set up and how to do your ongoing actions. So here's the first thing you need to do. Build your profile and fill it out completely. I was on stage uh, last year with a guy called Charles uh, Hardy from LinkedIn. He's the university uh, liaison guy at LinkedIn. He said to me, the number one activity on LinkedIn, you can probably guess this, is cruising people's profiles. We all love to do it. We love to go and have a look at other people's profiles. Now, the thing is that when you're looking at other people's profiles, they spot you and if you look at them, they come back and have a look at you. It's a great way, as I start, say, to start that digital dance. But the important thing is you need to fill out your profile so when they look, they see the message that you want. Likewise, when Google finds you, you want it to be serving this profile and giving the recruiter, the, uh, the hiring manager, the story that you want them to see. And these days, 
LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to add in photographs, all kinds of additional rich media, videos maybe that you've made. Uh, if you've been part of some kind of show, put that in. So many opportunities to really make your profile stand out these days. But the most important thing is if you're job seeking and you want to get the jobs from LinkedIn, what happens here is that if you complete your profile fully, they will give you more jobs and also a better quality of job. Okay, it means that the algorithm again can give you what's re what's required. Now, next up, photo feeler. Test at least three photographs with photofeeler.com so you get your statistics. That way you can put the best one there that's going to get you the best results. Third, keep building your connections. Add as many weak ties as you can. Some people are against this. I'm telling you, if you're moving into a different part of the industry, maybe you've been doing an MBA, maybe you're wanting to transition to a different part or a different company, you need to go into that different sector, that different company, connect with people, because guess what? Your profile only shows up in the search of people who are within your wider network. People don't realize that. They think they get spotted by everyone. If you've only got 24 connections, you're only going to show up in about 24 people's connections world that's probably about a thousand people if you want to show up in all those millions of people's searches when they're looking for your skills you need to have more people in your network okay if you want to connect with me i've got at the moment something in the region of nine thousand connections i don't know them all perfectly of course but when i want to send out a message i get a response because all those people know and i can find people in lots of different industries and people can find me and that's what exactly why I do this, make, taking advantage of these weak ties. But it also means I can serve my network. I look after people by giving them free information. I look after them by telling them where I'm going to be so I can help them or attend their conference. All kinds of things you're trying to serve and help your network. Number four, share updates each week. Be visible. This is an easy way of getting briefly. into Oh, Sam, we lost you briefly for a minute. Oh, sorry. Am I back now? Can you hear me? Up a little bit. Can you hear me again now? Shane, hopefully you can hear me. Or maybe yeah. everyone could write in the chat box, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can everybody else still hear Sam? You just write in the chat box and let us know. I'm going to keep going because of time. Okay. Uh, so uh, share updates every week. Okay, this is about being visible. This is not Facebook, so not cat pictures. Uh, this is LinkedIn, so make sure you're being sensible and the more on brand and on message you can be for your industry the more helpful you're being the better you'll find the responses will be but if something happens that you you see as great news maybe it's on the bbc maybe it's on maybe it's one of the releases from fdin you know if you like it share it that's a great way of being helpful to your network okay and it also it helps everybody else we all help each other by getting uh, things seen check who's viewed your profile you want to be doing that every single day if you're in a job search and visit the profiles of the people you would like to work for show an interest in them start conversations don't just jump on their profile and say have you got a job that's not a great way of serving them the great way of is to start an interesting conversation with them and become an interesting person that way they will be interested in you okay and then you can start to ask more indirectly about the jobs Join relevant groups. That's a great way of meeting people who are relevant within your industry. Endorse people. Remember, give us gain and write some genuine recommendations. People will love you for doing that. And you'll find people start to uh, reciprocate. You'll get them back. And definitely pay to upgrade. Okay, so join and get a little bit more uh, uh, benefit from LinkedIn. You don't need to keep it after you've got your job, but I recommend it when you are when you're looking. So let's connect. Uh, if you would like to add me, I will always accept you. Uh, it would be great to have you in the network. I don't know precisely what you all do at the moment, but it would be great to get to know you better because I know that you're going to go on and do fabulous things. And so I want to have you as part of my network so we can help each other. So do send me a, a connection there. You'll find me, of course, on LinkedIn. Now, my special offer, this is just to help you uh, get this done. So just very, very quickly, if that's sounding useful, it's just really the tip of the iceberg. Um, we've covered a lot there. There's a lot to do, uh, but sometimes it's easier to hire uh, a professional. So what we're, what we're talking about here is getting this done for you. Uh, what we can do is we can optimize your profile. We can get all the keywords sorted out for you, get the case studies written for you, make sure that all the keyword testing is working and that the ranking and the optimization is working so you're really going to get found. And then, of course, what I do is I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for you to give you the acceleration in your job search, show you how to find the, the hidden jobs 
uh, in your network, show you how to really get on with your network and get the very best jobs coming to you. So basically everything you need there to wow any recruiter uh, and to become, as I call it, the obvious candidate. Um, now this is working with me in person, so I can only do a very limited number of these. I'm only doing four, uh, but if this would be helpful, it's normally a 374 plus VAT uh, fee for doing that. But as a special for anyone who's here on the webinar, uh, we'll do that for just 247 plus the VAT. So if you're interested, we'll do that on a first come first serve basis. Just email me, uh, sam at obviouscandidate.com and we can help you do that. The other thing, of course, we can help you with uh, CV um, reviews. If you want to send me those, we can definitely take a look at that. We'll do that free of charge for you as well. Um, but just get in touch if that will be helpful for you. So, uh, Jane, not sure if there's any more questions. That brings yeah, us to the end. I hope that has actually. been, uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, somebody's asked, if someone doesn't have enough experience, say they're a recent student, what should they put in their professional headline? Uh, do you know, I, I tend to find that it's very rare that someone doesn't have enough experience. Um, there's usually something that you've been doing um, or Indeed, even in the next few days, there's some, something you could go and do that would start to get you some, some level of expertise that you could talk about. So definitely go out there and, and look for that. If you're genuinely starting out, put things that you're interested in is the other angle. So if you've been a student, what's the, what's the particular interest you've got? So if someone's looking to move into the food industry, maybe you've got a passion for health food. Maybe, you're, um, maybe you want to go and work in a company that's changing indulgence into healthy indulgence. So if you've got a particular area of interest, maybe it's probiotics. You know, maybe you're the world expert on vitamin D. You know, what's your particular niche? What makes you different? But rather than just saying, oh, I'm a student or I'm about to graduate, because there's too many of those. What we need is that you're a student with you know, absolute passion for the food industry, and maybe that you're a blogger. If you're not a blogger yet, set up a blog. You know, it's easy to find little ways to do that. Again, this is one of the things that we work with our clients to fix, to make sure that they've got that and they're thinking about it. Because these things have been done before. Lots of people are already doing it. If you would like, you know, a great way to do it is just to go and have a look around other people in the sector. What are they doing? What are recent graduates putting in? How are they talking about themselves? Uh, and see what's working for them. Okay, thank you. Um, and another question in, is there a difference between sharing and liking with regards to being visible? Uh, yes, good question, Olaf. Um, liking uh, will tend to show up um, for a few people, and, and but what happens if you share it, by sharing it, it's like you starting off the post again uh, from scratch, and it will go to all of your network. Whereas the people who see that it's been liked are just the people who can already see that post. Okay. So if it's been, if you're liking something that somebody else has put there, it'll be liked and they will see it for the other people. But if you want to introduce it to your whole network, share it. That's how that works. Okay. And um, should your CV, should your LinkedIn profile exactly mirror your CV in terms of content? Good question. Uh, absolutely yes, in terms of the hard facts. Okay, so things like the dates, and you would be amazed, uh, and I hope dismayed, at how many LinkedIn profiles have got different job titles and different dates that are somewhat similar. Now, that's a huge red flag for a recruiter. If they see your um, CV and then see that your LinkedIn profile has got a slightly different job title and a creatively fixed date around something, maybe you had a, a gap in your jobs. Um, really bad move because what you're doing there is you're just flagging that if even if they don't just reject you straight out they're going to ask you about that and you're potentially going to get into hot water as to which is right and which is wrong and at the very least you make it look like you have a poor attention to detail so those things absolutely should be consistent uh, job titles uh, dates of starting dates of finishing uh, names of companies the bit that you should change now remember this LinkedIn is out there 24 7 on the internet that's public okay so you're making this stuff public now it may be that you feel that it's appropriate now of course you've always got to be careful with uh, employer confidentiality when you start sort of saying what you've done um, but you can be a little bit I think more open when it comes to your CV because you've got somewhat more control as to where that ends up you're posting out to a few people you're not 
necessarily putting your CV out there on the on the internet for everyone to look at. So I would suggest that you, I call it that we don't copy paste the CV into LinkedIn. I say that we translate the CV into LinkedIn. And what I do is I sanitize and I reduce down what, what actually gets shown. This is also important. You know how little time you spend uh, on web pages. People are not gonna read everything uh, on LinkedIn. So the, the secret is to abbreviate, put the headlines in, put the key titles, and again, use the keywords from your CV to make sure that that is um, telling the same story, but with a different level of detail. Now remember as well, the other tip is that the LinkedIn, of course, is the internet, it's the web, it's very uh, rich in terms of content. So rather than just the words that you'd have on your CV, here's your opportunity to show pictures. Uh, you could upload PDFs that you've written, you could show presentations, maybe install SlideShare, or if you've got videos that you've made or that you've been part of, um, then you could put those up, you can link to YouTube videos and all kinds of other interesting things that you can do to get richness onto your site. So that's what's different between uh, CV and LinkedIn. Great, okay, thank you, Sam. I'm just conscious of the time, it's just after nine o'clock, and we were just going to do that last poll, Sam. Um, if you can, if you've got that last slide up in terms of the next webinar, have that one. So it should be loading now. So can you see that, Jane? Um, yes, I can see it. So we'd be very keen to get your input as to what we should cover in our next webinar. Um, to get your input. So there's three there. So I'm just going to give everybody a moment or two to fill that in. Okay. So interview success, how to prepare, perform, and follow up seems to be the winner. And then hidden jobs market second and speeding up your job search third. Great. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Lovely. Um, Sam, do you have to hop on your plane? Because there's one, just one further question that I've got here. All right, let's take that. Okay, so um, from Hannah, would you include any industry scholarships that you may have received at university? Absolutely. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, yeah, you know, you've worked hard for these things. Um, now's the time to, uh, to show it off and make sure that you stand out. Um, again you know be guided by what we've said you don't need to what people don't want is the whole um, dissertation that you wrote at university they want to know what they can get from it so remember you're trying to serve your network you're trying to serve people who might read that so a piece of research could be very interesting to a particular group of people so if you've been involved in something at university go for that uh, remember it's about the keywords great okay um, uh, fast forward to the last slide sir Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, everybody. Um, if you have any feedback on the webinar, please get it to me at jane.payne at fdin.org.uk. Any questions you've got about LinkedIn, sam at obviouscandidate.com. And if you'd like to take him up on his fantastic offer, then that would be great too. Lovely. Any last questions before we wrap up? Okay. Good. So I would just add. Uh, I would just add that uh, it's been a pleasure sharing this with you. I think we've got away blissfully uh, without too many announcements from from Emirates uh, as to when my flight's about to leave. So it's been a pleasure to share this with you. It's been a pleasure to share these tried and tested and proven ideas. Uh, it will be a pleasure to connect with you on LinkedIn and I look forward to working with some of you and uh, serving you to accelerate your job search in the future. So for me and from Obvious Candidate, it's great. Jane, thank you very much. Thank you to FDI and Jobs for, for having me again on this webinar. It's been a pleasure to share the ideas with uh, you and your audience. Thank you. You've been absolutely excellent. Thank you, Sam, and thank you very much for joining us. And we'll let you know when our next webinar is um, in the next couple of days. Good night, everybody. And, and we'll do the replay for you as well. Yes. Thank you. Good night, all. Best from the lounge. <laughs> Going to go and get that plane. Bye-bye.